Everything is leaking because the follow-up, the GTA situation. Now we've got the Diablo 4 has leaked. Yeah. And unlike with, um, unlike with GTA where it was technically a lot of content, but also just a lot of snippets, for this it's nearly 45 minutes of straight gameplay, which is a fairly different situation and does actually give us quite a, a lot of info that we can glean. Yeah, and someone is going to, uh, someone's going to suffer for this, I think, quite substantially. Because what actually happened was, someone who was in the, seemingly in the friends and family alpha, decided to stream their playthrough on Discord. Which, you know, if the other people on Discord are in the friends and family alpha, sure, doesn't appear to be the case. And one of those people appeared to have just recorded it, and then shared it. Which is, I'm gonna say maybe not the, not the best move overall, for anyone involved, but at least now we get to look at Diablo 4. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so insanely stupid. I mean, look at the watermark. Look yeah. at the damn watermark. That's a, how, yeah, that's a UID. That is a unique identifying number. How can somebody be that stupid? Like, it is... Yeah. Ugh, it is kind yeah. of mind-blowing how I mean, stupid yeah. that is. I mean, it's fine because they did vocode their voices to try and cover it up. Oh, that's it, yes. They'll have absolutely no idea who did it. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, this is an alpha. There are a few places where you can see, like, untextured things. You know, much will change, etc., etc. Now, this is mid-level footage. This is also not an optimized test build, so a lot of things, basically, could be quite different. But what it does mean is that the Diablo experts have been able to dive into every, uh, well, every frame of this and glean a few things, including some interesting things like, say, Smart Loot, which is returning from Diablo 3, which uh, I think perhaps some of the more modern players are happy about. So maybe some of the more hardcore purists are less happy about, with Smart Loot just being, um, you know, that the loot will be heavily weighted to what you can actually uh, use. So, yes. as for what has been identified then, so, for towns and artisans. Well, town services are now available on the map tooltip. Vendors can no longer be refreshed at will. So that's kind of interesting. And mm. there's a NPC that takes a currency called Murmuring Obels for a player chosen weapon with random stats. And this is earned by completing events throughout Sanctuary, which appear to be like overworld bounties. Now that then can have some people thinking because you look at a game like say Diablo Immortal and it did have this kind of well, a layer of MMO-like stuff on top of it with the likes of your dailies to do. Hello, so, Lost Ark? Anyone, yeah. anyone want Lost Ark 4? That's it, right? They're trying to get, I think, a bit more of Lost Ark within Diablo. Now, to a lot of people, that's actually going to be a more engaging game that they can go and play with their friends. Yeah. But it's certainly, you know, to some people could represent a little bit of a shift uh, as well because it is a Battle Pass-based game. Well, if a, you know, more inordinate quantity of battle pass progression comes from perhaps not doing the traditional ARPG thing, which is, you know, grinding whatever you're grinding or, you know, doing rifts or something. Um, you know, if it's coming from like, oh, do your dailies every day. Then to some people, that of course would be, you know, pretty, uh, yeah, pretty I mean, unfortunate. That's the thing where Diablo 3 was 11 years ago, almost very, very soon, 11 years ago. Uh, we're now, video games are very different now. And that's just going to be, well, this is going to be an MMO. Like, this is going to be... And I'll... I will always draw the comparison to Lost Ark because that's what they're going to aim for because they want Lost Ark. But you could also draw the comparison to Diablo Immortal. And that's going to happen a lot. And that's going to suck for them because it's not going to be Diablo Immortal. It's not going to be as predatory because it, it there's just no way in hell it could be. It's a completely different market, completely different developers. Of course, it's going. To, it's not going to be as vile as Diablo Immortal was, but yeah. that shadow will hang over their head as soon as people go, oh yeah, you've got Battle Pass. Oh yeah, you've got dailies. Oh, what are you trying to do? Is that time in app you're aiming for? Oh, is that because EA recently said that uh, time in app actually is, correlates one to one with um, the amount of money you spend? Oh, so you're doing this cynical attempt to get us to play longer in order to make sure you get as much money out of this as possible out of the premium Battle Pass, the Battle Pass skips, and all of the uh, uh, premium cosmetics in there, and all the microtransactions? Is this just a cynical attempt to get us to play more? And then everyone's going to feel that way. So even it's like, we just tried to make the game fun and give you daily stuff to do and try to take inspiration from the games that other people are playing that they're enjoying. People are still going to be like, yeah, but that's... But you're getting very close to dark patterns for that. Mm -hmm. Now for other things, hmm. stables for post-campaign mount content. Yep. Hey, 
Cool. cool. Fun enough. There's also blacksmiths and alchemists for, uh, you know, crafting using materials that you get or salvaging, uh, you know, items. I mean, you know how it is. There's the occultist, which was actually mentioned in one of Blizzard's blogs, and it deals with extracting the essence from a legendary and then imbuing that into another item. Mm. This is something that, of course, was in Diablo Immortal. And uh, overall, hey, nice. You know, get the legendary power you want. And, uh, you know, now it's yours, which uh, mm. is good. Character progression stuff then. So we saw a bit of the barbarian skill tree. Um, it shows levelable skills, some selected passive boosts. There's also the expertise tab, which, um, well, there seems to be like, the implication of a barbarian specific mechanic where you're basically like gaining uh, experience, uh, like rank with different weapons. And then the lost cache, which is uh, found in a slightly hidden bit of the overworld. And opening that up gave the person a small permanent stat boost to uh, characters on that realm. That is, that is just out of the Lost Ark playbook entirely. There we and go. that's the thing of, hey, we'll MMOify this. Hey, we'll, make, we'll give the overworld some a little bit of flavor so it kind of matters. So, you know, theoretically, you're going to be incentivized to go and look around and look at the nook and crannies. And that'll make you, like, enjoy and experience the world a little bit more. So you look at that as very much like the Lost Ark thing of, hey, this is the free-to-play MMO version of, you know, the game where here's all the little bits and tricks for you to continue playing and look around and everyone go oh well you're not going to look at the overworld right you're just going to use a guide but it's the same thing where genshin did a lot of that exploration stuff and was really praised for it because it was because people didn't draw and didn't go well that's the free to play mmo mechanic people went oh that's the breath of the wild thing that's a fun that's a fun thing it's a fun mechanic so hopefully people will, will play it in that sense yeah because yeah. it is it is cool and the expertise tab seems like hey here's a way to like specialize your class a little bit more in with like weapons and stuff so imagine that would be like for different spell types as uh any kind of wizard or sorcerer or something like that which would be cool yeah we've then been able to see with um like you know the overall maps and stuff like that just more of how things are laid out with like the waypoints side quests sub areas within uh, you know like within the overworld dungeons lost caches these things being tracked so the idea of i suppose some more just free form exploration aside from the campaign is is encouraged yeah. which of course blizzard have said is uh you know is actually their their intent and it's a good goal to have to yeah yeah now the waypoints have got free travel via scroll and you can use similar scrolls to teleport to dungeons or to bring party members with you there's a minimum recommended level for areas two um we don't know if like you massively out level an area will it then scale up to you like kind of I imagine an imagine end, something in an end game sense where yeah. it's like once you've done x event then everything will kind of you know oh the minions of diablo are invading, are invading that kind of vibe but i think it's like that and this is an interesting part where the one thing that you imagine uh diablo mortal if you played diablo mortal you'll remember it's all just like you can just auto travel more or less everywhere you just click on the map and you know you'll follow the footprints and take you wherever you want to go it's a i'm gonna say it's a it's a profoundly brain dead experience right mm. it is just you do the you go you go to you mentally go to sleep and the game will do the work for you and then you'll get the dopamine hits of whatever else but this is where you know the main quest content is it marks areas on the map but you have to find the objective within there and that's the idea of oh yeah that's that's the difference between being a game and being a, a number go up simulator the game is you have to put a little bit of effort into what you're doing not just in gameplay, but I'm like, oh, what, what, what am I here for? What's the context of the quest? I have to understand that to complete it, so I will understand it, so we'll have a better time. Much of the thing about World of Warcraft, like the quest marking and stuff like that, as we've talked about recently yeah. over on the channel. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they make a modern Diablo campaign feel. Yeah. Very indeed. Because I guess as well, like, structurally, this is a very different game to 3. Yeah, that's what's going to be, I think, awkward for people to kind of experience. Hopefully it's just, you know, you get in, you get hands-on, you're fine. But it's like, it's definitely going to be, hopefully it's better primarily for the good. I think a lot are different for the good. I think people are very much going, but, but three was, I know people like at the time didn't like three very much. I think people have grown to like it a little bit more in retrospect, as happens with all games. But I feel like there's a little bit of a fear of everyone going, this is different and change from Blizzard Entertainment is not good. I think that's what people have, have those vibes a lot of, also the people who are super excited for the game. So yeah, that's fair turn. I mean, to be honest, like, it overall is shaping up to look like a very good game. Yeah. Like, that, you know, that kind of real talk is what's going on Yeah, that, that, that's, that's, that's like, the, if you want to take anything away from the fact that here's 45 minutes of gameplay, I've went, ah, it's Diablo. That's Diablo with some cool stuff taken from Lost Ark. Sweet. No, there wasn't too much more to glean from that because, you know, that's the thing where people don't really know what's wrong with the game until they're, like, 400 hours deep. 
and I kind of feel, oh, well, you know, well, the balance of how often you get legendaries in this specific place is like kind of often ruins the experience. That's not something you're going to get out of 45 minutes of gameplay, but it is the kind of thing where they clearly didn't just copy paste D3 and call the day. They clearly yeah. went, okay, we will actively change this up. And obviously they did because they had that version that was going to be like an over the shoulder game. And then they canceled that and went back to something that looks a little bit more familiar. Crazy to think what yeah. that would have been. Yeah. Um, to quickly summarize, like, I mean, look, combat, it is what you'd expect. Items and stats, just a few small things. Um, there's no more inventory Tetris, right? Items are actually just all the same size. Loot frequency actually seemed more on uh, on the low end compared Good, to D2 and D3, but with smart loot because the barbarian character was not getting things that a barbarian cannot use. So yeah, that's... they're going like a little bit lower, but focusing in on it being like more meaningful, uh, as much as uh, loot 2.0 and D3 like did instantly feel better mm. versus Diablo 3, um, you could say that smart loot is your loot generally being better with you having the likes of an essence, ex you know, a legendary essence extraction yeah. uh, thing that could end up feeling quite good. But again, things like that are kind of hard to know. And this was just leveling content. It wasn't yeah. end game. It's the awkward part because that's like such a design pillar of Diablo. And I can't remember which there was one of the directors of one of the one of the first three games talking about like how much the go out, get all your stuff, go back, organize your stuff was like it was a two step process. It was adventure, cool down from adventure, adventure, cool down from adventure, all that in like inventory management. When you get back and like stash, like what do I sell? What do I keep? What do I, you know, keep for, you know, what I throw into my stash so I can give it to my friend who's on this server later on. That was so much part of like the game design. So from that perspective, hopefully they haven't just kind of did what they did with D3, which was throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. And then it turns out it doesn't stick for the average players. Hopefully they have actually thought, well, we're going to drop loot. And I'm sure they have because they've, they've got, they've, they've, they've hired people to think about this for months on end. You go, well, okay, what are we going to do with loot? Well, we introduced smart loot. Okay, but then that removes that part of the process. So how do we replace that part of the process with different gameplay, with a different gameplay design? How do we, you know, we want people to feel happy, so we give them more loot, but smart loot's going to make it overwhelmed, so we pull the loot frequency back. All these thoughts that are like, hopefully it actually will turn out okay. That's yeah. that's the annoying part of like seeing this and going, well, all you can do is put your faith in designers to have actually designed it. And, you know, hopefully there's feedback yet. I hope they, they test well enough in terms of like, okay, well, here's a load of Diablo players, ha have end game for a day, see what it feels like. That's more or less it. Hmm. Let's talk about money. I love talking about money with Blizzard Entertainment video games. How's this going to go? Let's find out. Honestly, it is kind of what you'd expect, right? <laughs> yeah. So there's an in-game shop. The currency is called Palladium. And, uh, well, there's some things like the Lion of Ariat character skin, the Raised by Wolf skin, which, I mean, they've actually shown us those skins before, I think, costing 2,500 each. A few other, like, you know, a weapon skin is costing 1,500, mount skin 700, uh, character skin 2,500, and a backpack skin for 2,000. So, again, who really knows? That could all just be temporary pricing. Um, alpha accounts were just given 5,000 palladium anyway. And also the transmog like preview feature um, was in there as well. So honestly, not much of a surprise. The way that this game is monetized is Battle Pass plus rotating store, we believe. Yeah. Well, not sure if it's rotating, but in-game store. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the thing where it, it looks like it looks kind of outside of the Battle Pass, which obviously the Overwatch Two having its own Battle Pass issues very recently. It's like, ah, how are you going to ruin this? Sorry, how are the developers going to have their game ruined by someone at Blizzard or someone at Activision Blizzard saying, put the battle pass in and put the money in the battle pass? Uh, so, so we'll have to we'll have to kind of see how that goes. But yeah. I I can't imagine they'll do too much damage, especially because this is a game you buy. I can imagine the battle pass stuff from Overwatch 2 was like, okay, this is free to play. We need to get money out of this somehow. Whereas Diablo will at least have the, you know, the couple hundred million dollars come in when it releases to go, okay, we're... We're happy enough for that. You can maybe have the long tail of it be a bit slower, but less aggressive. But it is interesting to see how many people are just like, oh, this is very, this is very Lost Ark. This is very not Diablo. This is more RPG than ARPG. This is not Path of Exile. Because that's the one yeah. thing you could have, you could have expected, right? You but it will be seasonal. Yeah, of course. It'll be of interesting course. to see how that pans out. Yeah, it'll be the, well, I mean, like World of Warcraft's a seasonal MMO and that works as far as that's concerned, uh, you know, if not for some other issues. But fundamentally, philosophically speaking, it works okay. But this idea of like, this isn't Path of Exile entirely. Because that's the one thing they could have done. They could have went, we will make Path of Exile, but we're Blizzard. We can make it better. 
and that probably wouldn't have panned out quite as well as it think because that's how they used to operate not so much nowadays but there is the idea of like people can i mean there are even comparisons from you know subreddits about yeah it's it's got servers like diablo mortal's going to servers diablo 4 probably will or something along those lines it's like it's the mmo it's the mmofication yeah. because the mmo and mmofication of a game brings so much brings so much to like the engagement all of like the social aspects and networking aspects of that it brings it on like the grander scale for today it doesn't bring it in the same way that like, like the original diablo with just a couple lads on a server brought that's not how people play games anymore because you want you want someone to be playing on the same realm as big influencer uh placeholder name you kind of want that idea and that's where that kind of goes for especially like the the long-term progression because instance progression and server progression i mean there's a little bit of this not being true with seasonal characters in diablo historically but that's the thing where seasonal characters go back to the day of oh you'd you'd start a new character with your mate on a different server now people want the long-term progression for the infinite engagement they want the sunk cost fallacy of well you've put six thousand hours on this character and you've bought all the gear for you might as well continue playing and that's not necessarily a bad thing it's just it's part of the consideration being made for all this stuff it's part of when they think should we go you know boot up a land server mates they'll never do that yeah. not but like when you're thinking about it in the start do we make it this way or do we make it this way or that way and they always go well which is the way that's going to be the more modern the way that's going to give us more engagement all that stuff and that's clearly like they've they've put they're they're doing the work there by adding horizontal progression seemingly which is what that needs to feel good in those games so they're not just going square peg round hole bang we've got infinite money they're going square peg round hole we need to actually turn this square peg into a round peg before it'll go in there yeah they've That's certainly doing, they've had their way. time to actually consider pretty yes. finally what this game is going to be yes and when you look at the general comment on this game yeah. it is looks good and then for some people this is either you know more in the direction they want or less in the direction that they want now there has been a follow-up from this mm. i don't really think that blizzard's announcement here is like directly prompted by oh. the leak but it just is that blizzard are going to be doing a confidential closed beta that will be playable on um, seemingly all the platforms that this game will actually launch on. Hmm. This is a beta that will be focused exclusively on the end game content. It will just be, you know, the, the post game, like Overworld and all of that stuff. And what actually is, um, you know, they're, they're talking about wanting that end game uh, sort of gameplay data. And what's cool is you actually having played Diablo games on your account will factor into getting in. Yeah. So that shows that. Truly, what they are looking for is experienced Diablo player feedback. Like, Good. not just, I don't know, like a bunch of fair weather streamers to, you know, hop. I mean, look, that will happen, obviously, yes. for marketing. But they're being very clear that this is not a marketing beta. This is a true closed confidential beta. So that's exactly what you want. That is, yeah, that's what you want to hear. That's going to be excellent, I think, for the, uh, for the end quality of the game. And uh, as such, it will feature things like Helltides which are these like big world events that are hard at world tier three nightmare, which is basically your you know big hard, uh, hard mode of the world. Uh, nightmare dungeons, whispers of the dead, which are rotating quests that appear across sanctuary that will be daily. And you do 10 in order to get a special reward. So, and I just, you know, I say that with a hubris inflection because to some people, this is like, fuck yeah. I'm, I can go in, I will have more things to do, they will change this up, this will be more varied experience, fantastic. But some other people are like, ah, I kind of just want to randomly play some Diablo every now and then, I don't want to feel like there's a daily thing that I'll miss out on, so very much, they'll, uh, you know, they'll have to tailor that one, right? Because certainly if you look at a game like Lost Ark, you can get players, perhaps like me or you, who see those boss fights. The really like hard, cool boss fights that people were showing off. But I look at Lost Ark and I say, right, so I'm either doing dailies every day on a few characters, or I'm swiping? Nah. To or even just dailies in one character, to which I say, no, I wanna as yeah, I wanna be there for the cool boss fights and see that shit. But do I necessarily want a kind of monetized, you know, currency based uh, loot grind? Now in fairness that will not be a monetized thing within Diablo. So perhaps the pacing of their character progression will feel more reasonable to a player who just wants to, you know, chill out and enjoy the content. I'd certainly hope so. You know what? This is a weird thought that just came to me. 
thing about Lost Ark and how, how video games kind of go for the big, hey, here's, you know, you have to do all this work to be allowed to play the game. I, Daryl Brain might have been right. There's an Irish comedian who did a skit uh, or a piece in one of his comedy shows many, many, many years ago. It was mm. it was so uh, it was so long ago. He was talking about Guitar Hero. Uh, that's how old it was. Ho- hopefully, most viewers understand what Guitar Hero is. But that was a very, very, very widespread game. Everyone who basically existed in the Western world heard about Guitar Hero knew about it. You have to play the preceding 84 songs to unlock Sabotage by the Beastie Boys. And the gaming purists go, no, you have to unlock it. That's the way the game works. And you go, yeah, I'm 38. I unlocked it in a shop with a credit card. Give me me fucking content. And this sparked this whole thing of, um, what do you mean I have to beat, I have to be good at this game to get to the later parts? I want to get to the good songs at the end but then you have to actually complete the songs to get there, which is the whole video game thing of, yeah, there's no other medium that says, oh, you want to see how this ends? Hmm. Well, get good, motherfucker. That's the thing where that's like, a, that's a whole big thing. But I always go, I would always historically go, yeah, of course, you do the work to get to the point of the game because that's how you like games work. That's, you, you, you do the thing because that's the whole conceit is you're on this adventure, you're the one physically doing it. And now I feel like maybe I'm getting old or the industry's getting weird. Where I see that, but that doesn't manifest as beat the game to get to the next port or get to the end to lock the content. You know, there is there is a there is a level boss in games, you get to the next level, I'm like sure. But now it feels more like, you know, you have to do the daily grind to get there. And it feels so uh. like it feels less natural, a lot more cynical, where it's like put in your hours before you get to see it, as opposed to you have to beat the content. And because that's like because time and regularity and it's not like scale or anything like that is part of it. I'm like, God damn it. Why am I suddenly agreeing with really old people who didn't understand video games 20 years ago? Why am I now agreeing with them? Because I feel like I just want to get to the, I just want the cool part instead of having to spend, you know, weeks doing the same boring shit every day. Well, to congratulations. Get to that point. You're now old at a younger age. Sweet. Absolutely. You got there 20 years faster than Dara. Absolutely. Um, that is sometimes how it feels like. Um, to yeah. quickly round off like the last two things, yeah. uh, there's Paragon boards for, you mm. know, going through the, the Paragon, uh, like, you know, sort of big end game, you know, progression system. Yeah. And the Fields of Hatred, where you will uh, get Seeds of Hatred, which is all the PvP stuff. Which, to be honest, is like, I was, you know, I did a quick bit of the PvP in Immortal, and I just thought, huh, this could be actually really fun if it wasn't Diablo <laughs> Immortal. So yeah. that totally could be a fun feature as well. And basically, that's it for the Diablo leak. Yeah. There's T- TL, it's not yeah. full of bad shit. Yeah, TLDR. It's a bit more MMO lighty now. It's taking good inspiration from Lost Ark. Hopefully not bad inspiration in a number of ways. It's not Diablo Mortal. And uh, most people who look at it either go, it's early game, but it looks pretty promising. Or that's a kind of boring early game. Hope it's better at the end. But most people are going, hell yeah. Also, idiot who leaked it <laughs> yeah i mean like gameplay looks fun and it's yep. funny how even just things like you know jumping and the verticality is yeah. like just kind of satisfying it's a whole, how, like, like the yeah. overall world feels yeah i mean that's the thing where that's like where a lot of like because i really enjoyed the first like 40 hours of lost ark before before you hit the wall and goes grind now time i'm like oh, okay but like uh the spectacle that playing around in that world because that's one of the things that kind of annoyed me about d3 and a little bit of like playing path of exile like the actual guess the novel content that you play through like campaign wise stuff wasn't very exciting and it's like yeah sure it's fine but it's like it feels like it's just kind of there to like win you into the end game or kind of build you up to the end game whereas if it's a little bit more hey this is a little bit more bombastic we've got like we've got some cutscenes we've got more actual you know effort put into our content it feels more like an actual real campaign that like a good you know especially when you're buying a game for a big price you're gonna want that hey that is a like double digit r's of oh this is actual what we what people playing video games now consider good content yeah and that's kind of stuff where they are they aren't taking shortcuts that's the thing i've noticed almost profoundly about all of diablo 4 and i'm not even a big like diablo or rpg guy but that's just oh yeah you're not taking shortcuts as far as i can tell whereas you could or you could be the case where, hey, Diablo is coming out, but we've, we're releasing the end game first because we haven't finished the, co- the PvE content. Like Overwatch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, not, it's a, a little bit unfair to 
take a piss out of Overwatch when we're talking about Diablo, but it is funny. It is funny. And it is Blizzard, so. Yeah. Overall, though, I actually expect that this game is probably going to come out in one piece and be pretty damn good. Yeah, which ultimately. Will, yeah, I I can only hope so because I don't think Blizzard can take a game releasing and everyone going, another flop? What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, I actually, I find it highly unlikely that that will happen with this game. Yeah, same. same, same. Actually, it's weird. For Overwatch 2, as a video game, I also feel that's quite unlikely. Oh, yeah. No, it's that, just that they keep on taking stupid L's. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that is the whole Blizzard thing, right? That's the whole Blizzard thing where if the executive team and the Activision Blizzard bean counters, because we've said this for how many years now, but Activision specifically, if the bean counters would take a holiday, if the bean counters could like just take a year off and let the developers do whatever they wanted and release whatever games they wanted, and obviously you couldn't just make a game in a year, but you know, make the changes they wanted to the game, release them how they did. If they did that, then Blizzard would probably be mostly fine. Yeah. Everyone would be like, oh, it's Overwatch 2. So, so it's free to play, yeah? And I get the, all the heroes, yeah? And there's no battle pass? Okay. How do, I, how do, you, how do you make money? Uh, buy skins if you want them. Sure. That, that, that's, that seems a bit more yeah, reasonable. Because like, if, if Blizzard just did the shit that Riot does, they'd get yeah. crucified because they fucked up their image, right? <laughs> yeah. Like that's, I guess that's the thing that I find endlessly fascinating about Blizzard. That's what they're contesting like, with, yeah. It, it's just such a case of them messing up their public image and doing kind of silly things. Because, I mean, imagine if imagine if Blizzard said, oh yeah, Overwatch 2 is going to operate just like Valorant. There'll be a rotating selection of... Now, obviously, Valorant is not a role-based game, but you well, imagine yeah, that, if Blizzard that, just the said, problem, there'll right? be a rotating thing of, you know... Or four characters per role every week or every two weeks. You can then unlock characters either via playing and earning or via paying, and there's a battle pass, and there's a cosmetic store. Have fun! Like, if Blizzard just announced that for a watch, freaking, you know, it would be commentary artillery yeah. would be landing upon them. Yeah, right, do that. I'm just like, yeah, you know, we're right. You know, you know, we generally don't disappoint you. You know what you're getting. People mm -hmm. are like, yeah, sure, fair. Yeah. Like, it, it is just real bloody interesting. Like, if Blizzard made, you know, it's like if they made Diablo 4 and even just, like, mirrored the exact business model of Path of Exile, they would hear far more bother from that than Grinding Gear games would because of those prior feelings of betrayal and how they've messed up their public image. And what they've basically caused is a default emotional reaction. Yep. That Blizzard have, this is the thing that I think companies have got to really get right. Um, the logic doesn't always matter, and I don't think that's a good thing. No, it's, it's also not a great defense because it's like, all right, I agree with you, but you still seem to have a problem. <laughs> so it's about managing the default emotional reaction. Yeah, that's the one thing I think everyone needs to learn this very much now. I think it's 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 always been the case with marketing, but in a world that's dominated by marketing and advertisement and like. I guess, you know, the whole, everything, everything is designed for your attention. How do you get to the human attention? Well, you don't say, hello there, sir. Would you like to have a think for a moment? You go, emotion. You go, anger. Are you sad? Angry. Get pissed off. That's like how, that's how the world kind of is largely orchestrated. Mm. Obviously, some of that's trying to, you know, the Coke ads were like, you know, look at all these happy people. They're all drinking Coca-Cola. Wouldn't you like to be happy? Drink a Coca-Cola. And that's like, everyone's so like hyper tuned to respond immediately to emotionality. Reality doesn't matter. Reality has no say on what anyone has ever done, ever. It is how they feel about reality, and then that's people to see different bits of reality because of how broken up the yeah, world is. Like really and that's like the thing about, um, I, was a, I was even just talking about it recently, like Saints Row. Saints Row, by all accounts, the new one is like perfectly reason perfectly reasonable game. It has good points, it has bad points, it's maybe not that interesting, but everyone has in their head, ah, oh, game sucks. It's like, does it? Reality says, not really, but the experience reality of people playing video games, the emotional experience of that game is, that's the thing I liked, and they made it shit now. Yeah, like Blizzard reuse um, some of the Covenant UI in yeah. the new expansion. Now, there's yeah. no player power attached to it. It literally works entirely differently, mm -hmm. and it essentially doesn't have any of the problems of Shadowlands for this specific thing. Yep. Like, I look at the comments, people are like, oh, they're using Covenant again. Shit game. Yep. And, and it's like, 
at no point is anyone to what and then i just realized oh wait why why would i even respond the th the thing is it's the default emotional reaction to the thing and uh, yeah. that's why i think blizzard and the bean counters certainly underestimated the hole that they had dug themselves into yeah they have no idea and that's just the way that it is and what that means then is that it doesn't it, it takes the tiniest amount of fuel to keep the thing burning yep and they certainly have even if they're not going to provide the fuel themselves someone will but well, that, yeah. I mean, and then they just yeah. release Diablo Bloody Immortal, don't they? Yeah. Now um, everyone's got plenty of fuel. Yeah, and that's the thing. And like rightly it, deserved yeah. for what that game represents. It's almost like a it's almost like a combo streak in like I'm gonna say Metal Hell Singer, because that's the recent game I'm playing with that mechanic. It's almost like a hit streak where if you drop your hit streak, you just keep getting hit. You're like, no, you need to be on a streak of like wins. Yeah. You need to release Diablo 4 and everyone goes, Alright, Blizzard, you get this one. We don't like the battle pass. You've at least done a decent job with it. Sure, we're happy enough. And then they need to go, here's Overwatch 2 PvE. It's actually really good and fun. And you can buy it for like a reasonable price. And there's no microtransaction specifically attached to it or no bullshit. And everyone goes, okay, well, that's a second. And then by the time they're like, okay, here's the third thing we're releasing. Say it's on the next survival game. People go, well, your recent track record is fine. So work away. Yeah. But until they get the first like, Here's the here's the good stuff, and hopefully Dragonflight launches like that, and then they get a little lead into it next year and get to go. Oh, hey, Diablo Four, Dragonflight wasn't so bad. Maybe you yeah. want Blizzard game. And it's, it's why for World of Warcraft we've long said like it took two bad expansions in a row to get us into this position. Yeah. It's going to take two good expansions to get us out of this position. Yeah, especially when they're doing things like in Alpha reusing bits of UI from the expansion that people didn't like, or like that's it. Should that matter? No. Does it matter? Yeah. yeah and like, that's, the, that's the lesson we all as people have to learn. As designers, I understand why you're doing this. All your logic makes sense. Yeah. But <laughs> we are no longer in those lands anymore, <laughs> my dude. Yeah, we are. We, 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 we are, as much as this, uh, you know, as much as people have bad ideas, but we are very post-truth. Like, we are extremely post-truth as, as a society now. Yes. It's just what happens like. We are begrudging, unhappy pragmatists. Yeah. I think for like me and like <laughs> we hate that it's like this. Yep. But we're at least going to acknowledge that it's like this because mm. if you don't, then you're running the the old version of software that no yeah. longer has the features that it needs to operate in the modern world. Exactly. And I think when people are, you know, through a few layers, you know, a few layers behind being frontline staff mm -hmm. in a big company. It just makes it easier and easier, easier for them to be insulated from the outside world to the point where I think a lot of the actual decision makers, they have different data inputs, like they yeah. see different people, they talk about different things, they experience different problems. And because those layers of insulation and not being frontline, it just means that they're running old software, yeah. you know, they're, they're, they're running the AI of like, you know, two or three games ago and it no longer works in the new map. Yeah. That's, that's it. That's that's why I'm more than happy for like, because a lot of this is like, why do we continue to engage in video games that are clearly going horribly wrong? <laughs> and it's like, the answer because there- Because we're fucking trapped. Yeah, because the we answer- Well, no. Well, the answer there for me is, because if this is where video game war is going to happen, I'm going to at least know what the battlefield looks like so I can so I can help out. Like, It's more or less, I was like, why are you going to Twitter if it's so bad for you if you know like, the social media is terrible? It's like, why? Well, you, gotta, you gotta take the lay of the land. If if we could solve that problem, yeah. the human race would be saved. <laughs> but sadly, that is out of scope for us, out of yeah. scope of this video. Oh, this yeah. video, which coincidentally has just ended. So <laughs> have a nice day. We'll see you next time.